But speaking of good news and funny shit, Disney. Oh, it, they all the numbers. You're fucking up by all the numbers. They are in big. I don't think they're going to survive this. They just had to slash seven thousand employees, or or at the very least, they're getting ready to. Yeah. And listen, wow. that, that's probably just the beginning because they are oh, yeah. massively in debt. They are not making money. Nope. They they haven't really put out a, a. I think they put out like two movies last year that actually made money. Yeah, I and mean, Disney Plus has turned into a fucking money vacuum. It's just they want to sell Hulu. It, it's a Bermuda Triangle of shit, and it's just all getting sucked in there, never to be seen again. That's right. And listen. Uh, I would love to see all of us uh, Americans who value, I don't know, God and have morals and standards never do business with Disney ever again. They have done nothing but prove to you and the world that they are completely untrustworthy. Damn right. They don't have a problem grooming your children. And they and they also don't have a problem inconveni- inconveniencing ninety five percent of the population, catering uh, yeah. to the you know loose gay butt twerking queer community. <laughs> yep, and that's their own words. Yeah, uh, I'm using their own words. That's how they explain their activity. They are shoehorning this into movies where it's not called for, where the storytelling doesn't require it whatsoever. And it's to the point where, I mean, they went from over $200 a share to, not too long ago, like 90 some odd dollars a share. Uh That's more than half of the value of their company lost. And now, with uh, 220,000 people employed worldwide, that means that these layoffs are going to impact the population of their company by over 3%. Well, I'm going to be honest. For them to actually uh, get back anywhere near profitability, they're going to have to dump between 30 and 40% of their employees. Actually, what they should do is sell back all these studios they bought up in their quest to become yeah. essentially... The juggernaut? A, a juggernaut, uh, you know, the entertainment, you know, tyrants, essentially. We own it all, so we're going to ruin all of the intellectual properties that you loved growing up with our woke bullshit. Oh, And, and, and you're going to line up and give us money for it, right? Yeah, in the rumor right? on the street. The rumor on the street is they're going to make Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke Skywalker pole <sighs> polishers. Yep. Yeah, that's not going to go over too well. No. And, and at this point, uh, Star Wars has become an anchor around the neck of Disney. So you yeah. know what? Do me a favor, Disney. Sell it back to Lucas at a heavy discount so that he can laugh his ass off at the $2 billion that he would still make if he bought it back for, from you for what it's worth now, which is well, Jack and shit and Jack well, left when, town. Listen, if they don't pull this – if they, I don't think they have the talent to, pull, to turn this around. I really don't. I mean, they are so infested with these, you know, woke grooming individuals mm-hmm. that are ruining their product and oh, and, yeah. and their company uh, trademark. I really don't know if they're going to be able to pull out of it. No. In fact, if they do go bankrupt, they're going to have to sell off a lot of that stuff for pennies on the yeah. dollar. And quite frankly, Lucas could probably buy it back then for uh, buy it back for what two hundred million. Yeah. So they paid him two billion or four billion. Four okay. billion dollars. Yeah. yeah. $4 billion to buy Lucasfilm, and he thought that because he was giving it to his good friend, Cuntleen Kennedy, that it would be just fine. Oh, I promise that we'll be respectful of what you've created. Psych! But let's listen. All right, so they paid $4 billion for the franchise. And they still haven't made the money back. Which came with 30-plus years of experience. Yep. Fan, it was already prepackaged. It was with in fans. the bag. All they had to do was not fuck it up yeah, with yeah. politics. Literally, you just keep the keep it rolling down the hill, and then they got rid of all of the, um, you know, independent individuals who wrote stories about. I'm trying to remember what this is. What is that? But the extended universe. The extended universe, yeah. and uh, there's a couple other things they got rid of. And I'm like, are you out of your mind? Yeah, they basically broke every promise they made to George Lucas inside of 48 hours after securing the deal. Yeah, and the last three movies were literally repackaged of the very first movie. They yeah. fight the Death Star. 
you know, uh, uh, you know I, yeah, incredible the odds. Star killer base. Yeah, yeah. Get the hell out of here. And, and The Last Jedi was essentially, well, let's see, uh, a chase in space where starships can run out of gas. And, and then it was prepackaged Empire and Return of the Jedi in a two and a half hour package that made no fucking sense whatsoever. Yeah, we had Ray, Ray, which is Ray Skywalker. Ray, yeah. yeah who was... Uh, well, she's Ray Palpatine. Ray, let's, Ray, let's be, sorry, let's Ray be Palpatine. And uh, she was able to do all of the cool stuff with zero training. Yeah. Let's be honest. Rise of Skywalker should have been called the victory of Palpatine. Yes. Because that's exactly what it was. Yeah, it was so dumb. Uh, literally... Uh, <laughs> Everybody was really willing to give it a shot, even with the things in The Force Awakens that pissed a lot of people off, like Han Solo being a deadbeat dad uh-huh. and Rey knowing shit that she shouldn't have known. Because, you know what? The characters seem to be, you know, kind of on the level. You know, I, I remembered their names when I left the theater. It's more than I can say about a lot of movies that I go and see. But then after The Last Jedi, I was like, you know what? No. It's absolute shit. We're willing to forgive you a lot of shit if you set up all these mystery boxes, and when we open those mystery boxes, there's good answers inside. Because that's what J.J. Abrams is best at. He, he gives you the mystery boxes. Unfortunately, he's never been the best guy at answering the questions that he asks. <laughs> all I could say is this. Um, they paid $4 billion for it. They had prepackaged fans. They had uh, prepackaged material. They could have made a hundred movies yep. based on the lore that you know fans have written over you know the the decades. And all they could do was a revamp of the first movie and then attack the fans. Yep. And how tell dare them, you? Yeah. Like, what are you thinking? You, I mean, they've never. Well, okay. Now I know what happened. Yeah. They politicized something that is supposed to be completely apolitical no, and in order to try to make people feel ashamed about their opinions. Well, instead of taking uh, you know, economics and learning about the customer's always right, you would think. risk equals reward, time equals money, they were taught gender theory. Yeah. That's why they don't know how to make a good movie. That's pretty much it, yeah. In my opinion. I mean, what if, do I know? If you want to see a master class... And how to not write anything ever. Just watch She-Hulk. Yeah. All wow. comes from the same bullshit company. Yeah, and listen, the, like, the new writers that are you know, now working in the entertainment industry are yeah. all trained leftists at these uh, lefty schools. Mm. And you can see it in, in the plots and the characters and everything. It is disgusting. Yes, it is. Unbelievable. Like, like that, the new cartoon, Velma. Oh, God. I watched half of one episode. I was like, this is complete brainwashing. Yeah. And Mindy Kaling is about as, she's the most overblown, untalented hack to ever come out of the office. And for some reason, they keep trying to push her in front of everyone. She's like Lily Singh. She's a diversity hire. Well, yeah. I, well, There's well, no talent there. They just really, really want to be able to say that they corrupted a piece of intellectual property with a woman of color so that they can dodge all criticism and deflect from legit gripes. I mean, at best, from what I've seen of her, she's like a C plus B minus actress. If that. I, I'm, I'm being generous. She, well, she plays the same character yeah. in everything. I know. Well, she doesn't have a lot of depth. It's like Clint Eastwood. Clint yeah. Eastwood's good at playing the you know, the rough, gruff individual yeah. at everything. That's just, but he, Some he's people good have at a it. niche, yeah. But yeah, but Mindy Kaling, the only depth that she has is balls depth, and that's how she got the job. Just saying. Well, that's our opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Tickle her uvula right in the back there. Oh well, yeah, don't forget about Phoebe Waller Bridge syndrome. Yeah, that uh, that really helped the last James Bond movie. No. Fox six. Watch Grunt Speak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to join Pop for supporter Sundays, go to redonkulous.com slash donate and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the meat case box.